It's new school versus old school. Now there are many different ways to cook a steak out there, but one of the ways that seems super popular in recent years is known as the reverse sear. I wanna know, is it really worth it? Pre-seasoning that steak, letting it sit for hours on end, going in the oven before searing it versus my old school. Seasoning it up, putting it right in a hot pan and searing it till it's perfect. Well, let's figure it out. Sound good? Let's cook. So to me, the steak that I feel is gonna be most perfect for this test is gonna be a New York strip steak. A ribeye steak, it's loaded with fat. It's gonna be good no matter what you do it. This is nice and lean. It's a simple pasture raised. It's got a good amount of intermuscular fat in it, nice fat cap on the outside to provide as much flavor as we need. So for this first one, we're gonna pre-season it and we're gonna let it sit up to 24 hours. Both New York strip steaks that I'm going to be testing are just a hair over one pound and pasture raised. For the reverse sear, it's going on a rack over a sheet tray lined with parchment paper, and I'm gonna pat it down very well on both sides of the paper towel. Then I'm just going to generously season it with coarse salt and fresh cracked black pepper, just as I would if I was getting ready to cook it right now in that pan. So that means all sides with salt and pepper. Then I'm gonna place it in the refrigerator uncovered overnight. It's recommended to do at least two hours, but up to 24 hours. So we've been letting this sit overnight. We're ready to cook it, and my old school self is starting to cringe. When you season something with salt, it draws out moisture. What's that mean for whatever you're cooking? It's going to be less moist, less juicy. There's already a spot of juice that's fallen through the rack, and it's on the bottom. I'm already thinking this isn't awesome, but the school of thought for this is you season it, and while it will draw some moisture, it will eventually go back in and season the deepest parts of this meat so that the entire thing is tasty. I don't know, I'm not convinced yet, but what we're gonna do now is we're gonna pop it in the oven and start that reverse sear process. The oven temperatures for this should be very low, so I'm gonna crank it down to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. This will ensure nothing overcooks. Once it's preheated, I'm adding it right to the middle rack in the oven. It's going to take about 45 minutes to 60 minutes to reach that 100 degree Fahrenheit internal temperature that I'm looking for. In the meantime, I'm gonna make a little bit of a lemon butter and I'll explain why in just a few. In a stand mixer, I've got four sticks of softened unsalted butter. Whenever I make this, I always make extra. It freezes really, really well. I promise you, once you try it, you're gonna always wanna have it on hand. I'm gonna whip it on high speed for about five to seven minutes until it becomes light and fluffy. In the meantime, I'm gonna finely mince up some Italian flat leaf parsley. Then I'm gonna slice two medium sized lemons right in half, taking them back over to the stand mixer along with the parsley. I'm gonna turn the stand mixer off so that everything doesn't shoot out of there when I'm adding it. First the parsley, next the lemon juice. I always have my other hand there as a guide just to make sure the juice creeps through, but not the seeds. Then at this stage, I'm gonna season up very well with coarse salt and fresh cracked black pepper. Be sure to adjust the seasonings, mix it until it's just combined. And hey, don't forget to taste it. Does it need more salt or pepper? You be the judge here. Then I'm gonna transfer the butter over to a 12 by 18 inch sheet of parchment paper. This is just the way that I was taught it. I'm gonna spread it out as far and wide as it can, but still keep it nice and thick. Then I'm gonna roll it over in a circular motion to make sure it's nice and round. I was always taught, no matter what we're cooking, whether it's a butter sauce, a piece of protein, veg, or whatever, always finish with a little bit of butter and clean acid. Just brightens everything up, makes everything that much more delicious. So really now, we just put it in the freezer to harden it up. Just twisting in the sides here to make a really nice tight roll, popping it in the freezer. It should be rock solid when we're ready to use it. Now, let's just go check on our steak and see where we're at. The steak looks great. It's nice and dried out on top to ensure I get that nice brown. And I pulled it at 100 degrees Fahrenheit. I love rare to medium rare, which is about 125. Now there are a lot of folks that pull it out at 110, 115. That only gives you a 10 to 15 degree mark where you can play with it while you're cooking it, which means it can overcook in a matter of seconds. Now, because we're already 100 degrees Fahrenheit internally on this reverse seared steak, I'm going to cook my old school style first because I'm pulling that straight from the refrigerator and that's gonna take another minute or two to make sure it's perfectly finished. I'm going to generously season it on all sides with coarse salt and freshly cracked black pepper. Then I usually roll it around on the plate to get all those extra seasonings up. Once it's seasoned up, 
It's pan time. Was always taught cast iron or carbon steel, and carbon steel just happens to be 99% iron, so either will work. I'm taking the steak and the cast iron pan over to the cooktop, I'm going to turn the heat on to high. Next, I'm gonna add in a few tablespoons of olive oil. Then once it begins to lightly smoke, I'm going to add in the steak, immediately turn down the heat to medium, medium high-ish, and let it sit untouched for two minutes. We wanna make sure we get that beautiful brown crust on there. It's also known as the Maillard reaction, which is a chemical reaction between the amino acids and reducing sugars and proteins, which happens through heat. At this stage, let's just have a look. See how it's nice and golden brown around the outside, but in the middle, it's a little gray. Here's an awesome technique I learned. Using tongs, grab the steak and move it around in a circular motion for about 45 seconds to one minute. Let's have a look. Yes, way better. Flipping over that steak, then I'm gonna turn the heat down to low, low medium, and it's going to sit for one minute untouched. At this stage, it's time for some flavor. Four tablespoons of unsalted butter, a few garlic cloves, four to six, a shallot that's been peeled, then about eight to 10 fresh thyme sprays. This is going to add amazing flavors to this. I'm going to immediately start basting it with a large spoon to make sure it's perfectly golden brown and add all those delicious fat and flavors to it to make it that much more delicious. So this steak has been cooking for a total of six and a half minutes, three on one side, three and a half on the other. I'm gonna set it to the side to rest for two to three minutes, adding a few extra things on top, then for the reverse sear. High heat, carbon steel pan, a few tablespoons of olive oil. Once it begins to lightly smoke, I'm going to add the reverse seared steak right to the center of the pan and immediately turn the heat down to medium, medium high. Remember, I'm already at 100 degrees Fahrenheit internally, so I'm only gonna cook it for one minute. Then I'm gonna begin to move it around in a circular motion for 45 seconds to one minute to make sure it's perfectly golden brown. I'm not gonna lie, I mean, it's definitely browning faster than the one where I put it right from the fridge in there, no doubt. Then after two total minutes of cooking, I'm going to give it a flip perfectly and evenly golden brown. I'm gonna turn the heat down to low, low, medium, let it sit for one minute untouched. Then I'm gonna add my garlic cloves, shallot, thyme sprigs, and unsalted butter. I'm going to baste just like the other steak for a total of two minutes to add in all those delicious flavors and get any spots that were gray to that perfectly golden brown stage. Now I'm gonna set it to the side to rest for just three to four minutes. I'm just trying to be 100% truthful here. I don't want to be biased from my old school techniques. The pre-seasoned reverse seared is definitely more evenly browned. And one of the things coming into this, I was worried about, hey, I'm already at 100 degrees. I don't have a lot of time to cook this. Is it really going to brown in that short amount of time? The answer is absolutely yes. Now, the one thing that's completely tripping me out here is the pre-seasoned reverse seared one. It feels super tight, like it's completely well done. That's how we would know in the restaurant industry. After practicing many, many times, we could push it and feel, hey, that's medium rare, that's medium. It feels well done. Now my pan sear one, it feels medium rare, but I temp both of them. My pan seared one straight from the refrigerator is actually 10 degrees higher than the preseason one. I don't even know what I'm doing here. This is tripping me out. So I'm gonna let this rest for another minute or two. We're gonna cut it. We're gonna put some butter on there, try it out. Let's have a look first at my old school way of cooking it, slicing it right in the center. Let's give it a quick flip over. Nice and medium rare, looks delicious. And now let's slice open that new school way. I don't know what's up, but it actually sliced easier than the other one. And look, it looks different. I mean, it's definitely more plump and full and just looks better. Now I've cooked both of these procedures, but I've never put it side by side to actually get a good visual. Let's not forget about that lemon butter I'm gonna add a little bit to the top of each steak. By the time I try it out, it should be nice and melted and all those flavors should be infused into the steak. So the butter technically is called Mater D butter. And back in the day in those old school restaurants, they would serve the steak and then put this cold Mater D butter right on top so that it just slowly melted in front of the guests. Much more for presentation, but there is that acid in there. It's gonna make it taste better and brighten everything up. They both look awesome. Let's just try them and see where we're at. Let's start first, my old school way. Dude, so good. It's tender, it's juicy, extremely flavorful. That Maillard, that, that browning on there, that crust, it's perfect. But let's see. <laughs> mm. 
man, like, I definitely never want to turn into those old dudes who's like, I'm stuck in my way and this is the only way I'm ever going to do something. I don't care what that guy does. Both crazy good. I would be ecstatic if either of these were on my plate at a restaurant. But I will say, this is more evenly seasoned. I will give the nod of the preseason. You can definitely tell how the inner parts of that steak in the middle, they're delicious. This is on the crust. This one all the way through. And it is, it's, it's more tender. It is more tender. It is more flavorful. So I don't even want to say and be that guy that I hate to, you know, not choose the one that I did, but man, that new school way, that's it. Now, the only issue I would have if I was in the restaurant industry, I don't know how many steaks I'm going to sell the next day. What if I pre-season up like 40 steaks and I sell 20? What happens to the other 20? They're beef jerky two days later. So if you're doing this at home, you got to be mindful. Give yourself enough time the day before if you have guests coming over to season up. But if you don't have that kind of time, honestly, the old school way is still ridiculously delicious. Now, if you love this and you just happen to love steak, check out my Steak Freets video. It's super classic. I've got a great recipe. See you on there. Dude, it is, it is definitely more tender.